Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to share five tips on organizing your footage and explaining the project media bin here. So this is the project panel in the bottom left corner. This is where all of your clips, sequences, graphics, and all types of files are held for you to drag in here and then drag out onto your sequences and build sequences and projects. And I'm going to share a couple tips on working and organizing with it. So first of all, your project media bin has a couple different views you can do. You can do the icon view, which is what this is. You see all the thumbnail icons. You can do the list view or the newly added freeform view like this. So the icon view just shows you all of your clips in a thumbnail icon. And if you ever double click on any of the clips, it'll open it up in the source window. And in the source window, you can scrub through your clip, see what it is. And you can also pull out selections and edit like this. I have a whole separate tutorial explaining all about the source window, but this is how you can go through, you know, double tap on your clip and kind of look through it if you want and work with it in different ways. Another tip is that you can also just scrub through your clip in the thumbnail mode like this, just by moving your mouse across it or dragging this little blue line underneath. And there's also lots of information about the clip inside of the project media bin. So you have the clip name, and also the duration, and also whether it has audio in it or not, or if it's a clip or a full sequence, like this is a full sequence. You can see that by the little thumbnail in the bottom right corner. So this goes all the way back to in the camera and the memory card. Most cameras, it'll just name your files like by date or a number that just goes in ascending order. So when, when I dragged everything in from the memory card into Premiere, into the project media bin, it just came out in this order of when I shot it chronologically. However, you can also choose, if you drop down this sort icons button, you can choose to put them in the sorting of name, type, um, even length or scene. So media duration, for example, will now put things from shortest to longest. And this is where I think you could switch over into the list view if you wanted to start sorting things in this way. This is a lot more traditional. You still have all of the information about the clip, such as the label color, the clip name, and you can always rename any clip. So if I wanted, I can name this like train shot or whatever I wanted. And you see the frame rate, the duration, all types of information about it. So I can simply click this button. It'll go in ascending or descending order from shortest to longest. And you see the different types of media have different label colors. So the clips with audio have this blue, the JPEGs have this purple color, and you know that when you drag them out on the timeline, they have that as well. If you check my video on timeline tips, you, could, you can see that if you ever right click any of these, you can change the label color to be whatever you want. So if you wanted it to be yellow, you could do that. If you wanted to organize in a certain way, or if you just go to the Premiere Pro preferences, and go to labels, you can see what all of the default colors will be for video or still images, and you can change them to be whatever you want as well. The other project media view that you have is the freeform view. This is a newer update, but rather than the icon view where everything is just in a grid, the freeform view allows you to move things around more like free thumbnails. So this could help you with organization. And whether you're in the grid or the freeform view, you can always move things around. So let's say everything from this room, I can put it here and then I can highlight them all, right click and set them into a bin of their own. So new bin from selection and that'll just show up as a bin. So another tip is you can organize your clips into bins and you can name those bins, whatever you want. So I can name this blue room and you can also change the view right here with this little slider, you can change the icon view. So you can see everything all at once, or if you want to zoom into the thumbnails a bit, you can do that. So things are a little bit unaligned right now, but I can always right click and align to grid if I want to align things back together, or I can also reset things to grid based on their name and then continue moving around. So you have some options there. Also, if you right click, you can click find and you can find whatever type of clips, especially if you have hundreds of things in here. Um, you could find everything that you labeled yellow, for example or everything that has a everything that's longer than 30 seconds you have all types of ways that you can find things with this custom find menu 
So that's also useful. And not only do you have whatever you have in here, but if you ever click on this new item or go to file new, you have a bunch of options for creating new things. So we can create new sequences, new just black videos or new color mats. So just solid color layers, for example, that will pop up. So different graphic layers that we can add on and just different files, adjustment layers, things like that. And you'll see them populate here once you create them. So you can begin working and dragging with them. Additionally, whenever you do have sequences, so right now this sequence here is open in the tab. If I ever create a new sequence, it doesn't necessarily create a new project. It simply creates a new sequence, which we'll see pop up here. And that'll pop up in its own new tab. But we still have the old sequence here and we can always open the old sequence whenever we find it. So in my list view, if I just sort by the label color, I can see there's two sequences right now and I can even name them like part one or part two or whatever you want. So I can have multiple different sequences open and I can build out things in those sequences and I can have them open in tabs or even have two sequences open together like side by side and work between them in a kind of pancake view and pull and push from one to the other. And ultimately you can create different sequences with different scenes and parts and then create a sequence and drag in those sequences onto your final arrangement or whatever you want to call it and drag in both of the parts into your final sequence if you're doing like a long documentary with multiple different edits. That's just one workflow. You don't have to do it like that. But also whenever you have a bunch of clips right clicked and nested together, it'll create what's called a nested sequence with all of your clips kind of grouped together. And you'll see those appear as sequences as well. So if you ever double click on those, it'll open up those nested sequences. So these are all just useful editing workflows. There's lots of times where nesting is very useful when you need to just put everything together, for example, and speed it all up by 50, 200% or something. And within each view, you have a little bit different of a workflow that they're suitable for. So this is a brief introduction and five or so tips on working and organizing footage. Check out my other tutorials where I explain the source monitor and also the timeline panel to get more familiar with those. And check out my whole explained playlist for more Premiere Pro help. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.